Okay. Yeah, hello everyone. Yeah, uh, we continue with the data cleaning and preparation. Uh, we will continue from uh, uh, permutation and random sampling. So this uh, chapter is Python. Yeah, but basic, the basic idea about this uh, uh, permuting or permutation, like it's getting uh, randomly ordering a series or the rules in a data frame, uh, it's possible using this uh, um, uh, NumPy random permutation function. So wh when we call this uh, 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 permutation method uh, with the length of the axis that we want to permute, it generates uh, uh, like random um, like integers for, for us, which, uh, which could be useful when you are doing some, some kind of a simulation. You just want to test some 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 model or something like that using simulated data. This could be very useful. So he gives an example here. So we get this data frame, um, which is uh, um, uh, sort of a, uh, a, 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 from from five five to seven five times seven, um, and dimension five by seven. So we get this as a data frame. And we use the uh, random dot permutate permutation to get a random number from zero to five, and and this the random number it generates like three one four five like like I think you mentioned at the beginning of the uh, the, the the chapter that uh, like computers don't actually generate actual random numbers, but it's some kind of a, a pseudo random number. Yeah, but uh, it's not actually a random number, but uh, it mimics uh, some kind of a random number. So. Yeah, so that array can then be used using the iLock, or we can use the take method to 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 uh, use that array and get our data frame this DF in a form like uh, using it to get some random order of our of our data frame. So if we call the take uh, sampler, which the sampler is the random uh, permutation we generated, if we use the take method, then it will then the index. Sort of, it will automatically change the index of our uh, of our data frame to this uh, random permutation that that the, the permutation that we have gen generated. So we could do that also using the iLock uh, method that we have seen previously. So that is with uh, with 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 rows. If we want to do it with columns, we just uh, specify here. We just say axis equals uh, column, and then it will um, sort of order the column. Um, based on the permutation or the random order we have generated. So here uh, we generated a, a permutation from zero to seven and we have this random permutation. And then in the take uh, function, we um, assign axis equals to column and then we, we get our data frame according to this um, permutation that we have generated. So when we are talking about random samples, then you, you, you have the idea of with replacement, without replacement. So when we just uh, using the sample method, when we uh, call the data frame sample, and then we specify the um, N, and then uh, we could uh, use that to generate a random sample without replacement. If we want to allow for replacement, then we'll have to say uh, replace equals to two. So if we if we use the sample method, the default is without replacement. So if we want to um, adjust that, we'll have to specify replace equals to to two. Yeah, I don't know if, if uh, there is anything you want to add on this part. No, going okay. just keep. Yeah, so then we go to computing uh, indicator or dummy variables. This is quite interesting, especially when you're doing uh, uh, statistical modeling, machine learning. And even in e econometrics, you know, we use uh, dummy variables uh, a lot. Yeah, so um, you might want to change uh, uh, converting a categorical variable into a dummy or a indicator variable. So like if the data if uh, a column in a data frame has k distinct values, we would derive a matrix or a data frame with k 
uh, columns containing all ones or uh, ones and zeros. That is a, a dummy one and zero. So pandas has this uh, method like uh, the pandas dot get dummies. So this get dummies function will just uh, uh, transform the column that we are interested in. It will just transform it to uh, a zero one entry. It, it will just transform it to a dummy variable. So he's saying that we could do this manually, but you know, when, when there is this method, get dummies, there is no point in trying to do this manually. So we have an, another example, that's a data frame. Uh, that's like a dictionary. So we have the key, um, but that's a data frame here. So the key and the corresponding values from zero to six. So we could see how the data frame looks like. So the key and that is the, the data or the value data points, oh, sorry, the values we have. So B0, B1. So when we call the get dummies method on this data frame, and then type, we set it to uh, float. We are doing this because the default type is a Boolean. Uh, it's a Boolean, so that's the default type. So to change it, we can just say type equals to float, and then we'll have a, a floating uh, value. So it, it basically converts the key column to a dummy variable in which in which case we have the it, then it, each of these entries here each of these categories because we have three categories here we have category a b and c so it converts each of the categories to a dummy variable and makes them entire columns so we see for the column a that a occur only twice so the other entries were which were not a we just make them zero and the entries that were a we make them one so the same thing for b so this this could be very useful, you know. This could be something very useful. So in some cases, we might want to add uh, a prefix to the uh, column indicator to the columns in the indicator data frame, which which is uh, sort of it's much more comprehensive. Like here, if we prefix equals key, and then uh, and then we join it with the with the with the actual data itself, then we have the we we join it with the uh, with data one like in the actual in the initial uh, uh, data frame we join the sort of we join the the the, the data that we had convert the, sorry, the categories that we had converted into columns of dummies if we join it with the data one um, and then we add a prefix to the to, to each of the categories then it's 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 much more comprehensive then you could see oh this is the key a, the key B, and the key C, and that's the, the 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 initial data itself, the data one, or the values. So the data frame dot join method will be explained. Oh, okay. So if a row in a data frame belongs to multiple categories, uh, we have to use a different approach to create a, a dummy variable. So now he's looking at an example. This is from the data set uh, movie lens. Um, so this is the, the data, um, movie names, you have the movie ID, the title, and the genre. Then sort of we read tables, and that's the, sort of that's loading the data in. So this gives us the first 10 entries. You see the, the movie ID, the movie title, and the genre. So this is the genre of the of the various movies we have. So uh, so pandas has implemented a special series method called the string um, 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 str or string get dummies method, uh, uh, which will be discussed further in a uh, string manipulation that uh, handle scenarios multiple group members encoded in a delimited, delimited string like a csv type sort of so when we call uh, from the movies uh, data frame when we call um, uh, get dummies uh, based on the january uh, column then, then it becomes more complicated because under each genre you have different, different. You have multiple, sorry, you have multiple categories under each genre. So this makes it 
much more complicated. So that's why we have to use the uh, the str dot uh, get dummies method. Because when we look at the false entry under the genry, we have uh, um, we have ammunitions, we have uh, we have um, children. We also have a committee. Yeah, so these are the 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 various genres we have for the first uh, uh, for the first row, and for the second row we have uh, adventure, we have uh, children's. We so so basically you could see what uh, this uh, uh, str dot uh, get dummies does. So when we just use when we just call the get dummies method, it will not work in this case because the uh, the, the 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 genre column had uh, multiple. Uh, uh, categories. Yeah. So we could also combine the the uh, as as before. You could combine this with the movies by adding a gen. So we could also add a prefix, and then we could use join to connect it to the uh, to other columns if you want to add uh, other columns to it. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is quite. Uh, quite useful in uh, uh, doing data manipulations. So a useful recipe, uh, a useful recipe for uh, study, statistical applications to combine the contest.get dummies with a uh, discretization function like uh, the contest.cut. So where we want uh, to like get some kind of bins or things like this. So uh, the, the example it gives us to uh, just generate random numbers. The seed, we set the seed so that we could replicate uh, for reproducibility, sort of. So values uh, is equals to this random uh, uniform of size 10. And so this is value. Just generate some random uniform numbers from zero to, to 10. And we have a bin that is from zero to one with uh, interval of uh, 0 0.2. So when we call the get a dummy method with the, and, and cut it, and, and, and the cut based on the values and the bin, we have like a, um, a dummy variable, but since we, 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 it sort of, it gives us a default uh, true or false, which, uh, which uh, indicates whether the particular uh, entry is in that uh, interval or not. So if it's in the interval, true. If it's not in that interval, then it, it gives uh, a false. Yeah. Yeah, if, if, if you have any anything to add on this part. Okay. So now he starts to talk about some extens extension data types. So uh, Pandas was built uh, on uh, a NumPy, and so it's uh, like uh, an array computing library. So it has uh, many of the, so, so since it's uh, built on NumPy, so um, many Pandas concepts such as missing data were implemented using what was available in NumPy while trying to maximize computation between the libraries that use NumPy and Pandas. Together, so building on NumPy led, uh, led to a number of shortcomings. So this, these are some of the shortcomings. So missing data handling for some numerical data types such as integers and 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 booleans was was incomplete. Also, data sets with a lot of string data were computationally expensive and use a lot of memory. Some data types uh, like time intervals, time deltas, and timestamps uh, with time zones could not be supported efficiently without using computational expense um, arrays of of Python objects. So these are some of the the, the drawbacks because it was uh, built on NumPy and these are some of the challenges that uh, was put, that, that, that these are some of the challenges with NumPy. So this is what led to the development of NumPy having some extensive data data types that try to sort of do away with this uh, problems. So a more recent, uh, uh, more recently, Pandas has developed an extensive data 
an extensive an extension type system allowing for or uh, uh, for new data types to be added even if uh, they are not supported natively by numpy so, so basically that's it so it's like it's we could use some other data types that are not supported by numpy so basically they are not built in but um, they are specific to pandas so this new uh, data types can be treated as first class alongside data coming from numpy so this is an example so we have this series this is a pandas series so we have uh, a non so but this data type will be treated as a float and and we could see non is like uh, not a number um, um so and if we look at the data type for us it gives us a, a float 64 So, uh, so basically, he's saying that we could also keep this is uh, basically in uh, based on the this is in NumPy because uh, the basic building block for the found the since pandas is built on NumPy, so so this is NumPy. So he he's saying that we could do the same thing using uh, uh, the pandas built in uh, the pandas uh, extension type. So. So we could uh, create this series instead of using a uh, uh, pandas dot int sixty four d type. So when we set this, so this capital D tells us that this is a, a pandas uh, extension, something like this. Yeah. So it tells us that the data type will be a, a pandas, not uh, the native numpy. Yes. So in pandas, you, instead of uh, uh and an a n that we see so in pandas we just say not uh not a sign or something like that but it's still going to be uh like and, and here it's like uh, uh we set it to int uh 64. so we could check with this whether it's a is a any we could use the check as an any which will uh, return a, a a boolean uh So the, the type NA indicates that uh, a value is missing for the extension type I. Uh, so this uses the, the special pandas dot any uh, sentinel uh, values. Okay, so so the, the difference is a bit subtle, but the whole the whole idea is since uh, 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 NumPy has some drawbacks, so then uh, that led to the pandas community to have their their own some some type of extension that uh, extension types that try to circumvent or deal with the the drawbacks of numpy uh, of numpy and makes uh, pandas much more uh, efficient and you know some stuff like this so the capitalization is necessary otherwise it will be a numpy based non extension type so that's why um, here we saw the capitalization here in the data type when it was setting the the, the, the data type, yeah. So pandas also has uh, some specializations that uh, that it also has some extension types that specialize for strings. I think we'll see more of that when we look at the 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 part uh, the section on on strings strings manipulation. So and he said that this uh, string arrays uh, generally use. Uh, so here we, we we set the data type to dot uh, or like a pandas dot uh, string. And so he's saying that the advantage with this is it uh, 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 generally uses less memory, and are frequently uh, and are frequently computationally more efficient than using the uh, the, 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 the 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 native uh, numpy um, string. So another uh, uh, important important extension is the categorical, which we will discuss later. So here we could see uh, 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 an example. 
So uh, extension types can be passed to the series as type or. So if we set the series to as type, we could specify the type of extension we want uh, it to, to reflect, allowing you to convert easily a part of your, your data cleaning process as part of your data cleaning process. So here's an example of a uh, of a data frame. We have like uh, the column A and B and C. Um, so we could see column A, it's a, uh, we, uh, we could set it to int uh, 64, but uh, yeah, we could set it to int 64. As type, we could set that to in 64. We could uh, set this to a string. And uh, as type, we could set the third one to a Boolean. There, that is the data type they are already in. But he's saying that we could use this as type to set it to uh, to assign it to a particular data type we want it to be. So these are the, uh, the various. Uh, uh, extension types we have for pandas. We have the Boolean, uh, the Boolean B type. The capital D indicates that as a pandas extension, the categorical uh, D type and, and so on, so on and so forth. Yeah, so we look at the uh, uh, the string manipulation uh, section. Uh, so pandas, uh, Python has long been a, a popular uh, raw data manipulation language. In part, in part, due to its ease of of use for string and, and and text processing, which is now quite huge because you have a lot of data that are text, you know, so which makes Python also very useful to 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 deal with uh, things like this. So more uh, for more complex pattern matching and text manipulation, regular expressions can be can be uh, needed. We will see that also under the, sec the section of the regular, regular expression. So pandas adds to the mix by enabling you to uh, apply string and regular expression on whole areas of data, additionally handling the annoyance of missing data. So we have some built-in uh, string object methods. Um, so some of these built-in examples, you have functions like the dot split, so the dot split method. These are like built-in. So the, the split is often uh, combined with the, the strip to trim uh, white spaces. So when we call the dot split, you could see it uh, added a space between the A and B. Uh, we could see that. And it created this extra space here. So uh, normally it is used in conjunction with the the stream, the trim, trim to sort of uh, uh, trim white spaces, including line breaks. So we could also use this uh, this uh, symbol uh, with the with the two colon uh, delimiter using additions. We could use that also. So um, these are also built-in uh, methods. So we could uh, use the join. That is even more faster and more Pythonic process. We could call this uh, two colon delimiter with the, uh, and join it to the, uh, the data frame we want or they join it to the series that we want to we want to include it in and then it it it, it produces the, the the desired result so we could also use other me methods to help us locate substrings like the index the find i think even the in the in okay yes so in we have used the in keyword so we check so the in will return a, a boolean a true or false so we check whether uh guido is involved uh, which is true and it returns true. So the index, uh, uh, so it gives you the first occurrence. So uh, it gives you the first occurrence. And the find, I think it also gives you the first occurrence, but if it doesn't, 
if it is not there, it gives you a minus one. It gives you a minus one. Instead of giving an error, it gives you minus one, which is the difference with the index. If a particular index, if a particular dot index doesn't exist in the series, so index will return an error, something like that. So know that the difference between find and index is that index raises an exception if the string isn't found versus the 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 the, the, the find will just return a, a negative one. So this is an example. When we check for the, the this colon in uh, in val, so there is no colon in val. So yeah, there is no colon in val. So uh, sort of index will return uh, an exception saying that oh, uh, soft string not found. So count will just count the number of occurrence of the, the, the substring we are interested in. So it's it's just like a, a count in R. Whilst replace will just replace it with uh, another value that we give it. Yeah. So like here, when we replace the, the commas with this double colon, and, and that's it. So replace is somehow straightforward. So these are some of the built-in Python methods. Um, I think these are very useful string methods like count, which is you, you know usually used a lot. Ends with it runs true if string well if string ends with a, uh, a suffix. Uh, starts with join, index fine. Yeah, so one could look up to this. Yeah, then we move on to regular expressions. Yeah, sorry if you have any comments. Uh, <laughs> I don't know whether what I'm saying makes sense. Have any comments or mm, anything to? No, add? I don't have any question because these are the actually kind of function for the usually yeah. doing mm. the text mining kind of process. So regular mm. expression is actually have a there mm. is a Python package called uh, RE like a regular expression. So yeah, yeah, that package mm. actually gives us a more advanced kind of function for the pattern matching or some of the replacing mm. the some text or mm. string or mm. character based on the pattern. So mm. yeah, these are also very, very same, very yeah. or, or, or exactly the same when we try to do the text mining in R. So yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. regular expression is actually kind of a common grammar um, used yeah. by, used for the text mining or some of the string data manipulation. So yeah, you just, sure. uh, yeah, you just uh, keep going. Okay. 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 So, so we, we move to regular expressions. So, uh, it, it provides a flexible way to search or match, uh, often more complex string patterns in, in text, like you mentioned in text mining, it's, it's quite useful. So a single, uh, expression commonly called, a uh, regex, uh, is a string formed according to the regular expression language. So Python has this built, built in RE module the regular expression model, and it's responsible for applying regular expressions to strings. So we'll look at a number of examples. So he, he mentioned that, you know, this book doesn't go into details on regular expressions. So if one is interested in getting, going deep into this, you could find some materials online. So the, 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 the RE model function falls into three different categories. It matches patterns, it does some substitutions, and then it split, it does splitting. So basically that is what this, uh, module or the RE regular expression function does matches some patterns that we are interested in in the text that we have mined or and then and, and those substitutions in that same text and it splits uh, some parts of the the string or uh, or stuff like that. So let's let's look at this example. So the regular the regex describing one or more white space character is this. So yeah, it's this uh, the the backslash s Plus. So we, we import the RE and that's the text. Let's say this is a text with mine. So when we call the RE dot split with uh, with this uh, backslash S plus, so what it does, it uh, it uh, removes white space. And we've seen this white space, it remove it and it moves this uh, funny characters we are seeing. So this is just, an, just for a purpose of illustration, but we could see it removes white space and, and some funny characters that are not uh, actually what we're interested in. So this is quite useful uh, in text mining, like you mentioned. So we could, you, you, when you call the uh, regular expression split, the, um, the, the, the regular expression first 
is first compiled and then it splits and then it split mentioned then it split method is called on the past text so we could do the compilation ourselves we could do the compile uh, we could just call this regex is equals to um, re dot compile this and then we apply it to our data so this way we could always be using we could reuse this regular expression which makes more sense you know if we compile it and assign it to let's say a particular variable and then we could be re reusing it which is much more easier so we could we could use other methods within this uh this regex that we have created we have already compiled and created it we could use other methods we could use the find all method we can apply that so when you apply the find all method it will give us all the 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 crazy the, a lot like the 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 part, the character, like said, the, the 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 strings that have been matched or replaced or 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 something like this or some of, yeah, it gives us all that fine all. Mm. So so he's saying that creating the regex objects with the uh, re dot compile method is highly recommended if you intend to apply uh, many times because you could always reuse them and it also saves you computer. Thus, it saves you uh cpu cycles so as we can use the find method we can also use the match and search method even though there is a, a, a subtle difference between them but we could use both to uh look for certain uh uh, uh characters or something like this in in our text so here is an example we have this text of uh, emails and that's the pattern that's the 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 pattern um, we are looking for. So these are the that's a, the basically the regular expressions within this. So the the re dot ignore case makes the regex like case insensitive so that it doesn't have to mind consider the the, the case whether it's upper or lower case and stuff like that. So we uh, compile it before applying it. We compile the uh, so the re dot compile we have a pattern we have already set our pattern and then we make this flag and say oh you know what ignore don't mind about the case just apply this pattern regardless of the case whether it's upper or lower so when we uh, apply the 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 find all method gives us the all the emails we have in this text so search returns uh, a special match object for the first email address in the text. So that is find all returns like everything while search just gives you the first match. In our case, when we apply the search to the text using the, the regex that we had already compiled, we have, it matches, it gives us the first email address, which is Dave at google.com. So reject match returns none as it will match only the, the, if the pattern occurs at the start uh, of the string. Okay. So, so it, it, it matches only if the pattern occurs at the start of the string. Um, so it uh, basically returns none. So we can use the sub, I, I think to substitute, yeah, okay, that's it. But we can use the sub, uh, uh, sub will return a new string with occurrences of a pattern replaced by the new string. So so here, when we call this sub method to the text and and, and uh, identify the new entry we want, let's say redacted, so it replaces all the, the text we have, all this with redacted. So, uh, so basically, these are some very good methods. It's so we could also use the 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 groups method. We could also use the groups method. We could use it uh, along with the match. We could uh, apply the match method, and then we call the group group method to it, which will uh, give us the various uh, uh, groups in our text. So here we have the. Um, the, the 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 username 
the domain name and then the 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 the, the suffix you know as the the the, the groups So when the pattern has a group, the define all returns a tuple. When the pattern has groups, yeah, I think tuples. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So these are some other methods. Yeah, and and then it gives us a a table of the various methods of regular expression. Mm. So we have the find all, find, uh, find iterator. Match, such so it's uh, some of the various uh, uh, some of the various regular expression methods we could apply. So now we move to uh, string functions and pandas. So to clean the data, of course, we have to do a lot of string manipulation, um, especially when the data has a lot of text. So to com uh, complicate matters, a column containing strings will sometimes have of course, missing missing data. So how do we deal with this missing data? Missing, sorry, missing data. So here is an example of this data frame. We could see Wes um, has a, a not a number. So uh, and the data type is an object. So an object data type. So when we apply the is any dot is any method, which returns a, a, a boolean, it. Uh, Gives us false, false, and true for West because it's uh, is an any. So he's like we could apply some uh, uh, some 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 uh, uh, like methods like the lambda method or the map data dot map method to do some. Uh, string and regular expression manipulations, but it usually fails if we have this any values. So to to sort of, sort of to cope with this, uh, series has uh, array oriented methods to string operations that skip over and propagate even uh, any. So even if any's are available, so we could still work with the series. Uh, so this this could be accessed using the str. Attribute, for example, we could check whether each email address has Gmail in it with the str contains. So when we do str contains, it uh, it could do that, which will return a boolean. So the the, the results is a object data type. Um, so uh, an object a data type is a pandas data frame typically means the column contains strings, but it can also uh, have other complex data types. Yeah, yeah, so, but mainly it, it, it it's more like, uh, an object data type is more like it contains strings, but it could, it could also obtain, con sort of, it could have even integers, it could even have booleans. You know. So we, when we, let's say, set the data as type string, so now it, it takes the data as string, and then we could see, instead of NAN, it gives, an, it gives us an NA. So signaling that now it's like a Python data type, like, uh, let's say, a Python extension or something like that. So when we call the str.contains, we still see the, the same similar output as, as before. Yeah, so this is basically the application. So we could also vectorize uh, elements, uh, vectorize element retrievals, either use uh, str.get or index in the string in the str attribute. So here, when we call the str, uh, find all pattern. So we could, we we like str zero method. So str zero method extracts the first match from the list of matches for each uh, string. So 
uh, yeah so um so when we call uh, the str get one it uh, gives us the um is it the 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 second column the, the 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 yeah the second column because the first column would have been zero str zero would be the usernames so now str uh, str get one gives us the 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 second column which is the domain name and then str dot get two would give us the the suffix like that dot com or like so we could also slice uh, strings using, so we, uh, this is just like we had seen, like slicing in strings is still the same as the normal slicing, slicing we have in Python. So when we call the data dot str, dot str uh, colon five, it gives us the first five entries, or sorry, the first five like elements or characters, something like that, first five characters. And the, the str dot extract method will return the Group the capture the will return the captured groups of a regular expression as a data frame. So this I think it's even I think this is much more useful. This uh, really useful. This str dot extract because it will return the extract the the the, the extracted um, regular express expressions in a data frame for you. So so basically you know it looks more straightforward and then you know you could just pick it up from there. Yeah, so these are some uh, listing of the series string method. Yeah, I, th I think this is some kind of like a en en class encyclopedia where you have like all the information and then you can just like reference it, get back to it and use the methods that you need. But I, I don't think the idea is to get to know how all these methods work. It's just to show you that, you know what, all these methods exist and you just use what you what you need at uh, at your at your own, uh, based on your own projects or work. So then the next uh, section is about categorical data, uh, introduces the pandas category, categorical type. So it will, so, so, so he said he will show how to achieve better performance and memory in uh, use in uh, pandas operations using this categorical uh, data approach. Mm. So the, the motivation, uh, is that frequently a column in a data in a table may contain repeated entries for a small set of distinct values. So we have already seen the unique and the value counts method, which enables us to extract the distinct values from an array and compute their frequencies respectively. So this is an example of a, a series. Uh, which we assign to value. So we could see uh, some kind of a repetition is we are just repeating this, the first part because we're multiplying by two. So there's a little repetition. So when we call unique, it gives us the unique uh, um, categories or unique uh, values, uh, apple and, and orange. The data type is, a, is an object, which we say is just like some kind of a string but it could also have some other things like integer and stuff like that. So when we count the uh, the value count, just counts how many times, like the frequency, apple six and orange two, and the data type is an int. So uh, how to deal with this repetition? It uh, sort of depends on the, the type of uh, uh, data warehouse you're using or something like this. So in uh, data warehousing, a best practice is to use so-called dimension tables containing the distinct values and storing the primary observation as an integer, referencing the dimension table. Okay. So this is uh, the values series, uh, like zero, one, basically uh, this data, but now instead of Using the actual values, you just uh, make them like zero ones, some kind of a dummy. And we call that values. And then we have the dimension or the dim, which is the actual category, like or the actual value, apple, orange. Mm -hmm. So we call values, we have this. When we call dim, 
uh, which is uh, the apple and the orange. So we could take the we could use the take method and uh, get back to get the original series that we had here. Get this. We could use the take method. Yeah. So when we call uh, dim takes values, we have the like the index which will be like zero one zero one like a, a dummy, and then we have the the values. So this rep representation as integers is called the categorical or the dictionary encoded representation. So these are the various categories. Like we have here, we have two categories: apple and orange, apple and orange, and then these are the the codes or the category codes, simply codes. So uh, the categorical representation can yield significant performance improvements when you are doing analytics. So, so this is one of the reasons why one might want to um, um, convert your series to, like you could, you want to convert the, 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 the columns to some kind of a category and give them codes or, or category, category codes, something like this, because you could get uh, uh, improvements in uh, performance. Some examples, uh, some example transformations that can be made at relatively low, co low, low cost are uh, renaming categories, appending a new category without changing the order operation of the existing categories. So there are also some uh, extension types for categories in, in, in Pandas. And uh, uh, this is uh, a popular data compression technique for data with many occurrences for similar values and can provide significant faster performance with lower memory use, especially for string data. So it tries to give another example. So that's the fruits uh, series. And then we have the length. We like calculate the length of fruits. Like total number of elements in fruits. And then we generate a random number and then we have we add all these things to have this data frame so that's the that's the data frame these are the basket ids and the various types of fruits and the count the frequencies and the weight so here uh, the data frame fruit is an array of python string object so we could uh, convert we can convert it to a, a category okay mm -hmm by calling the ask category method when we do that. So when we do that, it converts uh, it to uh, fruit, it converts fruits to category and we could see the data type with the category. And then we have two, two categories, apple and orange. So we could do it also use, just using the, uh, the, uh, the pandas, uh, we could also call the dot array method and it will also give the same thing the we could assign it as dot as type category or we could just call the dot uh, array method it will still all give the same so uh, a useful trick to get uh, a mapping between code code and categories is to use the the dig uh, enumerate C dot uh, categories and then yeah which is this like this if you have it's easier so that if someone sees will know oh the code uh, zero is for category apple and one for 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 orange yeah I think it's still talking about the same stuff categories and stuff like this. So we could also set the ordering of the, the various categories. We could, if we set order equals two, then um, it, it could uh, it will set the, the 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 categories, and then the series will be uh, like we, we will see the, the, the categories and the um, uh, that is if we are combining two different uh, um, categories 
or quotes and uh, uh, different quotes and, and categories, something like this. So as a last note, categorical data need not be string, even though I have shown only, so he had shown only examples of strings, but it need not be strings. Can consist of any immutable uh, value types. So it does not necessarily have to always be string. So now it talks about the computational efficiency of that, that uh, using categories have. Uh, so some parts of pandas like the group by function performs better when working with categorical. So uh, there are some also functions that can utilize the ordered flag. So look, look, looking at this example, let's consider some random uh, numeric data and use the the pandas dot q uh the bean in function. So this returns uh, pandas dot categories categorical. Okay. So when we compute the uh, the, the the quartiles, um, so sort of four is like the the into four categories. Let's see. Mm. Mm. So basically here is just trying to say how uh, computationally efficient is it to use uh, the pandas dot categorical as opposed to using the the the, the default um, um the, the default methods in pandas. So we could also label the the categories as a, as we have here label q1 q2 q3 we'll still have the same data, but now instead of seeing the actual uh, intervals, we just see the, 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 the categories. Hmm. Yeah. So here is just showing how it, uh, so let's say we have this, n is equals to this much, and we have labels as this. Now let's uh, convert labels to a categorical. Uh, so we say labels dot as category. Now we know that label uses a significant more memory than, than categories. Hmm. So we are seeing the memory usage. We could see that it, it uses more memory usage. So when we convert it to category, it uses less memory. So basically this is just trying to illustrate uh, how uh, using categoricals enhances our performance and save us more memory space. Mm. Categorical methods. So. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think that's it. I think now, yeah, that it gives us some methods for some categorical methods that if one is interested, you could uh, look deep into them. Add categories as ordered, unordered, as unordered, remove categories. And then it touches on dummy variables again, but he has mentioned dummy variables before. So, so when you are using uh, uh, statistics or machine, machine learning tools, you will often transform categorical data into dummy, dummy variables, also known as one one hot uh, encoding. This involves creating a, a data frame with a column for each distinct category. These uh, columns contains ones for occurrence, and yeah, we have uh, he has mentioned it previously. I don't know why he's bringing it here again. Yeah, but basically that's it. That's the that's the chapter. It's it's a long one. <laughs> I'm not sure whether what I said makes much sense, but that's it. If you want to have, if you want to add anything. Okay, so let me try.